Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to talk about the recent paper from 2016 that may have solved uh, the mystery of Saturn rings, specifically how these rings may have actually been formed. Welcome to What the Math and enjoy the video. <laughs> So this beautiful planet, Saturn, is probably one of the most beautiful planets in our solar system and of course it's the most famous planet for its huge huge rings. Now, you may have not known or you may have known that other gas giants also have rings but they're not as large as Saturn's rings but they do have them, they do have these rings orbiting around them as well and uh, so far the theories were... Um, quite diverse there's quite a lot of theories behind the formation of the rings but one of the more compelling theories is that it was either based on a moon by the name of Veritas that used to orbit around Saturn and then because of the proximity to Saturn and because of the strong gravity of Saturn this moon essentially fell apart and it's not really doing that right now but let's move it a little bit closer toward the Roche limit uh, the concept which I will discuss in one of the future videos but let's just move it a little bit closer and make it fall apart so there it is I think it's increasing in size it's slowly changing its shape because it's actually being destroyed by the tidal um, forces of Saturn so this was the most prevalent theory where basically these rings were formed from a moon that used to be there but uh, we then realized that maybe this is not as simple as this maybe just maybe uh, this was actually formed from the beginning. As a matter of fact, maybe these rings were actually formed uh, when Saturn was formed and just uh, some of them were too close to Saturn so they never um, solidified, never became uh, moons like for example Titan which was far enough to actually solidify into a, an actual object but the objects that were too close to Saturn never got to do that. And some theories suggest that maybe there was a moon that was actually struck by an asteroid or something very large and then it fell apart and created the rings. So these were the theories so far, but none of these theories explains um, one thing. So we know that the um, rings of Saturn actually mostly contain like 95% ice. Now Saturn is actually heating up, but that's because of the friction and tidal effects as well as the matter falling on the surface of Titan from this moon I placed earlier but let's just ignore that for a second so we know that the majority of these rocks uh, that orbit Saturn that are right here most of them are basically ice 95% of it is ice the mystery was that well if you actually look at the rings of other objects like for example um, rings of Neptune and Uranus which both of them actually have smaller rings but they do have rings as well these rings are much darker and seem to contain mostly rock and some uh, may even contain metal. So for both Jupiter and Saturn, the rings seem to be basically ice formed. They seem to have only ice formation. But Uranus and Neptune, which here doesn't actually have rings, but it does have uh, rings in reality. So let's just look in, uh, at uh, Uranus and said, so both of these um, planets seem to have more darker, more silicate based uh, rings as opposed to being water based. And as of now, there was actually no explanation for this inconsistency until the paper from 2016 from a Japanese university of Kobe that basically suggested that maybe just maybe these rings were formed in a very different manner. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to try to show it to you how they were formed. So here's actually the extreme situation of that simulation. So Saturn has this very large object of Neptune coming closer to it. And because of the interaction of gravities, specifically because of the tidal forces that um, Neptune experiences when it approaches the so-called Roche limit of um, Saturn, what is going to happen is that Neptune is actually going to fall apart and create a kind of a ring formation around um, Saturn. And you'll see that happening after I run the simulation for a little bit. You can already see it happening right now. So the rings will actually start forming around it because this object fell apart due to tidal forces. And so what this paper uh, from Kobe University suggests is that both Saturn and Jupiter earlier um, on experienced a lot of um, close calls, uh, not collisions, but close calls with very large objects, specifically probably objects that would be similar to Pluto, Ceres, Pallas, and so on, basically dwarf planets. So maybe, just maybe, um, several billion years ago, during the so-called um, late heavy bombardment, which is basically when Earth received a visitor that essentially created the moon through a very large collision, maybe Saturn and Jupiter also received these 
close calls that didn't really collide with the planet. And I think this one will actually collide. So I may have to increase the speed here to about 25 kilometers per second. So it was basically these close calls from various dwarf planets that passed by that didn't collide with Saturn. Although they all seem to be colliding right now, but they didn't really collide. They basically passed through and because of the interaction with the gravity of Saturn created this ring formation that we have around it. And because these objects contain both um, rock and ice on it, for Jupiter and Saturn, due to their lower density, only the ice escaped, only the ice essentially formed the rings. Whereas for Neptune and Uranus, because they're actually a lot uh, more dense than Jupiter and Saturn, um, they were also able to capture various rocks. So let's see if we can actually do it right now. Or actually, let's just place one of them in sort of a orbit around uh, Neptune and see what happens due to the uh, interaction with the planetary um, tidal forces or basically planetary gravity. So with time, this object will actually form rings because it will fall apart and create a bunch of particles orbiting around this planet. Uh, so Using the computer simulation, uh, these scientists from Kobe University were able to basically uh, estimate the possibility of uh, these various objects, such as, for example, uh, Sedna here, uh, passing by the um, orbit of Jupiter and Saturn, and through the interaction with the strong gravity forces, uh, basically releasing enough material for these uh, planets to acquire um, their own rings. And to be honest, it's actually a very compelling theory. It's a theory that kind of explains the differences in composition of rings between Saturn and, of course, uh, Neptune and Uranus, which are right here. And at the same time, it also explains um, why and how these rings may actually form um, in other parts of the galaxy. So many exoplanets seem to have these unusual rings too, but we still have no idea how they formed. But I guess one thing that it doesn't really explain is why the rings actually seem to orbit with the rotation of the planet. So if this were actually true, if the, uh, if the actual rings were formed through um, a close by passage of a dwarf planet or any kind of a smaller, uh, not as massive object, why is it that they seem to orbit in the same direction as the rotation of the planet? Now, it may actually not seem strange until you actually look at the orbit of Uranus, which actually um, spins in sort of a very strange direction. As a matter of fact, it's um, almost 90 degrees to the plane of orbit um, in our solar system. So had the object actually come from this direction, it would make sense. But had it come from this direction, it wouldn't really make sense why it would have rings spinning in the same direction as its um, plane of rotation. So in other words, uh, most of the minor planets would probably come from sort of this direction right here and uh, for them to actually create this sort of a orbital ring around the planet they would actually have to come from the other direction so it still is maybe not the best explanation we have but it's definitely a good explanation for why the composition of these um, rings is so different from one planet to another and well, anyway, so this is a really interesting paper. You can definitely check it out um, in the link in the description below. But for now, I think I'm going to stop this here. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and possibly leave a comment about what you actually think. What do you think uh, about the rings of Saturn? How do you think they were formed? Or better even, do you have a better explanation for how these beautiful rings were formed? Now, this is a really cool simulation that sort of puts Neptune, uh, Saturn and its rings into one single um, orbit and then they start interacting and kind of destroy each other but I love doing this because it looks absolutely amazing and uh, you may also want to consider uh, supporting this channel on Patreon I'll see you guys in the next video game you later and as always bye bye and let's destroy the old rings and create the new rings from the destroyed Neptune that's the power of Roche limit and the tidal forces of Saturn and I guess this is a pretty good ring that I've just created, even though it's not as good as it used to be. Well, that's the best I could do.